Baron, thank you so much for joining us here in Malta and joining us here today at Gracie's. Uh, what a privilege and pleasure it is to have you. The name Rothschild is obviously synonymous with wine and stunningly excellent wines. Why the move across to Champagne? No, uh, the reason why is, um, first of all, curiosity. Uh, we wanted, we, we've been sort of talking about Champagne for many years. Uh, my grandfather, Baron Philippe, had his own, first of all, he was a shareholder of a, a well-known um, Champagne called Ruinard for a couple of years. And then he had his own Champagne called Reserve Baron Philippe, which was tiny, a thousand bottles or something. So he, was, he, he loved Champagne. Uh, Baron Eric, my cousin, uh, who deals with Lafitte, uh, loves Champagne. And we have a point in common is that we s sort of buy quite often old Champagnes at auction. So, I mean, Champagne was always something that we were sort of, you know, running around. And, and one day we said, okay, hold on. Uh, as, as you rightly mentioned, we have so many wines on the wine lists. We already invade the wine list with all our wines. So maybe it would be more decent to have one Champagne. Because otherwise, you know, there would be no space for anybody else on wine lists. So we said, okay, let, let's have one champagne. And, and it was very awkward because it was the first time the three branches of the family, in other words, uh, Eric's branch, uh, Lafitte, uh, Mouton, my branch, and uh, Benjamin's branch, which is Clark and South Africa, um, which, is, which is actually the three branches in, in the family which produce wine. Uh, and it was the first time that we sort of got together around the table and said, hold on, Let's try and do, and when I say try, I mean try, and do one champagne. Uh, and as you know, families are always difficult to cope with, uh, you know, because nobody agrees. But it's nothing to do with Rothschilds. In every family, nobody agrees, so it's sort of quite normal. So we got everybody around the table, and we said, okay, how, how do we do it? How do we start? And, and people had different views. Some people said, okay, we should buy some land first. And then we, then we said, no, no, let's produce some champagne from, from producers, and then, then we'll see what, if we buy land afterwards. And we find this sort of, you know, by sort of brainstorming, we finally decided to do it all together. And it's the first project, and today the only project uh, in the family that we have done together. Um, so I'm very happy because it's really, I mean, it's the, it's, I can say it's the family project. Um, and, and I was around the table and they say, well, do you want to look after it? Because I've been doing a lot of startups and, you know, and, and many things like that in my life and, and developments. And they said, okay, do you want to look after it? I said, yes, yes, that's a very good idea because I love champagne. So let's, um, let's start from there. And that's where it, I started 15 years ago. 15 years ago and the first bottles came out 10 years ago. Because it took us five years to really you know, refine what we wanted to do exactly, what type of champagne, where we wanted our producers, our wine growers to be and everything. So there was a lot of thinking about it and, and it really went on for five years. And after five years, the first bottles came out. So let me ask you, what are the, the challenges? What's the difference between producing wine and champagne? What makes champagne different? Um, it's, it's very, it's, um, it's very different. It's very different because when we produce our wines, uh, we always try to look for you know, complexity, depth, and structure, and, and all the rest. Uh, when you produce champagne, because champagne is, is clearly a drink that, you know, to celebrate, mm -hmm. which is what we like to do in this family. <laughs> we like to celebrate. So it's, it's really a, a, a pr product to celebrate. So you have to have a product that at the same time is structured and complex, but at the same time is elegant and fresh. So it's, the blending is completely different. And I've been doing some blendings of wine, of, of red wine and blendings of, of champagne. And I can tell you that the two blendings are completely, I mean, completely opposite. You're not, you're not blending the same thing, you're not thinking of the same thing, you're not thinking of the same product. So it is wine, at, at the end, but at the end of the day, because it's not the same purpose, um, and it's really a product that's there to, you know, to celebrate and to, to um, in, in, many, in many happy occasions. 
then, then it's, a, it's a completely different way of, of looking at the product. And it's this freshness and this elegance that we really want to try and find in our champagne. And to be honest with you, and I can say it because I, I am not producing it uh, directly, uh, they, the, the producers, the winemakers have really found this great balance in the champagne, which I absolutely love. Baron, with over 300 champagne houses, what makes the champagne from Rothschild different to all other champagnes? Uh, well, first of all, because we, we, uh, we put a, a piece of ourselves in it, which I think is very important, because I mean, producing a wine or producing a champagne is also about people. It's not only about wine. And, and you know, when, when you have all these people in this family getting together and saying, you know, that's what we want, that's the pleasure we want to share with other people, uh, already you're starting to do something different from what others have been doing before in the champagne world. That, that, that's point one. Um, the second thing is we've concentrated very much on um, Chardonnay because that's where we found that the wine grows that we really went on very well with. Um, and, we, and so that's basically all our champagnes are very much focused on Chardonnay, which gives it a, a real sort of freshness. Um, and, and I think it's, it's uh, and then we age it longer than many other champagnes. Even the Brut, normally you age the Brut sort of two years, maximum two and a half years. We age it four to five years because of the Chardonnay. So, so we've got an aging process, which is, which is much longer, which gives it a, speci a specific uh, taste also. And, and for all these reasons, I, I really think that we are very specific, very specific. And the one thing I really focused on when I took on the project, I said to the, the people in the family, I said, hold on, there's two things I'm going to ask you if I have to look after this, this champagne. The first thing is I want at least three board meetings a year. And that was a constraint for them because they, they're all very busy. And, but at the end of the day, since they never meet, it was an occasion for them to meet and be round together around the table, so they were very happy. The only trouble is that when you do a board meeting with family members, you can have, it takes half an hour before you get them to focus on the champagne, because they've got so many other things to talk about that they, you know, they, they have difficulty to focus. The second thing I asked them to do is that I said, hold on, wherever somebody goes in whichever bank, Rothschild Bank, whether in Zurich or in Hong Kong or in London or in Paris or in New York, whatever, that's the only champagne I want to be served. And then I said, in any houses you have, that's the only champagne I want you to serve. And in all our properties, wine properties, whether Lafitte or the Mouton, that's the champagne I want you to serve. And, and they were very disciplined on that, actually. And, and, and wherever you go in the family uh, place, you will see that champagne, which is very important for me because it's not my champagne, it's not a champagne, it's the family champagne. It's a part of what they are. It's a part of what they like. Uh, and it's the part of what they want to share with other people. And I think that's the important thing about the champagne. So as you mentioned, uh, Rothschild has a legacy of looking ahead to future generations. What will Champagne Baron de Rothschild have for the future generations ahead? Um, I want us to be um, champagne made, made from family, from people that come from wine. Uh, and that's what I want, you know, it, it's because it's, it's something very specific and very different. In other words, how do we, from our taste, from our sensitivity, uh, from our way of thinking and, and our way of, 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 you know, producing wine, how do we get all this sensitivity into, into our champagne bottles? And I think that, that's what, we, what I really want to do. And it's the reason why we have many projects going on right now. Uh, we started to buy some land. Uh, so now we really are going to produce, uh, although before we had all these wine growers where we, which, with whom we had long-term contracts and we, which we sort of followed very, very closely. Uh, but now we are, in the next couple of years, uh, we'll be able to have our own champagne grown from our own acres. And that's, that's very important because don't forget that wine people come from the land, come from the roots. And, and that's what's, that was something that we missed a little bit in the Champagne project when we started, is that is not to have our own roots in the Champagne region. And it took us, as you can see, a couple of years. But now we've bought some land. So now we really have our feet in the ground. And we will start from there and we will continue to make Champagne and we will continue to make special cuvee. 
And, and to be honest with you, we'll, we'll continue to have fun. Because I think that's the important thing. We, 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 to share something, you, if you want to have other people you know, to have fun with your product, you have to have fun producing it at the same time. So otherwise it doesn't, doesn't match. So Baron, let me ask you something, if you don't mind. When all of your working week is over on a Friday night, what's your favorite tipple? Ah, that's a horrible question. Uh, a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> is that okay? That's should, absolutely I have fine. A, one better answer? No. Um, uh, it's very difficult because I, I, um, I love this, this wine and champagne world. In other words, I love to discover new things. Spend my time trying to, you know, taste new Chilean wines and new um, Australian wines and new champagnes, and 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 uh, and, and I think it, it, it's the beauty of this of this world in Champagne is that every day you can keep on discovering something new, a new taste, uh, a, you know, a, a new um, a new flavor, uh, a, a new perfume, a new something, and and it's the, the incredible thing about this this world is that. Uh, you can go on for years and years and years and years. Uh, in 15 years, in 20 years, in 30 years, I'll still be discovering new things in this. Uh, and then I'll say to myself, oh, hold on, this is nice. Maybe we should try and do this with the champagne. We should try and do this with the wine. So it's always something that you, um, you always discover. Uh, and so, and the day I will stop discovering, um, my tipple will fall dead. Baron, thank you so much for being with us here at Gracie's and in Malta and thank you for sharing your passions with us. We do hope you enjoy your stay here in Malta and uh, thank you for celebrating Champagne Baron de Rothschild with us. We look forward to seeing you again here on the Maltese Islands. Mm -hmm.